The internet's a pretty spooky place out there. There's a lot of bad guys, a lot of bad bots, a lot of bad AI trying to attack your website. Well, maybe not AI attacking your website yet, but I'm sure that'll come by the end of the year. Just hold on tight. So there's a new lifetime deal at AppSumo. I'm gonna check it out in this video. This is not a sponsored video. I'm just checking it out and seeing if it's worthwhile. It's called Cyber Angels One. It sounds like a, I don't know, transformer character that's going to defend your website. So let's find out if it's any good together. So here it is. This is my account, Cyber Angels One. I'm currently on the AppSumo Tier One plan. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time over on the AppSumo website. Just know that you get everything in every plan. You just have to choose the tier that fits with how many websites you wanna protect. So I'm on tier one over here, one website. It also apparently does email. So one email protection as well. If you need more than that, or if you're an agency and you wanna offer this to your clients, you can do so up to 600 bucks for tier six. There's plans in between as well. This uh, is kind of the top one, gets you unlimited sites, unlimited email, you can do 50 uh, customer sites, so on and so forth. All right, so let's check it out. Is this thing actually worth it? I have used it very, very lightly, and I gotta say, first impressions, not terrific, but let's dig in a little deeper together. I'm gonna show you what I've uncovered, and then we'll go even further and complete the application. You can see everything that it's capable of. So when you log in, it looks a lot like this. Actually, the very first thing it had me do was to fill out a form. And that form was just a bunch of questions kind of asking about my security habits. Do I have a firewall? Do I use two-factor authentication? Things like that. I just said yes to everything. Uh, so then when that's done, I got shown this page here and now they want me to add an asset. So you click right here and then you can link up your domain. So I entered in clientamp.com. That is my company's website. And then you have to categorize the website. I found this part a little bit weird because feels like I'm doing market research for them to let them know like what type of customer I am. Um, but it was like, you know, agriculture, freelancer, consultant, things like that. So I just chose other here because uh, I didn't see one that was a great fit. And then you can head over to this tab up at the top for email monitoring. This is where I ran into my first snag, uh, which is the fact that my email address apparently is not supported. Now I did check out the AppSumo deal page and I don't see anything about like, you know, Gmail being the only one or or Microsoft's kind of like being the only email platform provided. But if I do click over to add my email address, I'll show you what it says. My email address is not on those platforms, by the way. Uh, it says unknown air, except it says UK known air, or obviously a typo there, but it, it's there's an air of some kind. So I can add in just like a regular old, I have a Gmail account that I use basically for deliverability testing. Um, so if I add that in, uh, it works just fine. So Gmail apparently works, but uh, the other one does not. Here it says modified website. Another kind of signal that this might not be a fully ripe deal, but we'll persist, we'll stay positive, assume that it's going to be better as we go get into it. Um, and then let's, let's kick over to the homepage. So the homepage here, what we saw uh, when I first clicked on the add new asset button, you can see that this is kind of like a dashboard. Tell me what I need to do. Um, first thing is to schedule a welcome call, like an actual call with a human being. I don't really want to do that when it comes to cybersecurity stuff. Uh, I feel like it's going to be a sales call. I don't know that, but that's what I would assume. And I don't want to hire a consultant. That's why I get software like this. So, you know, it's it's there. I did notice that they, they have some other upsells. And, you know, with a lifetime deal, that's important. You need upsells. Uh, insurance seems to be the main thing that they're trying to sell you. Uh, so here's like their little insurance spiel for how you can, uh, you know, buy their additional coverage. Uh, and if that's something you need, cool. Um, I would probably go to like my local business insurance first, like, you know, whoever, if you have an office or something like that, where people are actually uh, already insuring your business, I would probably do that rather than, um, you know, a company on the internet that I haven't, I guess that's maybe why they want the call is to scale you the insurance. That, that makes sense. Uh, but, you know, I've got relationships with personally with with insurance agents, and that's probably where I'd go first. Uh, but after that, we can see our latest reports. So all I did was add in that email address, uh, add in that website, and then I can click see now. And there are some reports. I did notice that even though my email address didn't work, it still tried to create a report for it. So that's interesting. However, if I go over to the monitor section, it definitely only shows this email address is added. I've done a lot of like back and forth on this. I can't get the Dave at client amp email address to show up under your email. So 
I'm not sure entirely what's going on there. The report is like a, a document, right? So this might be something you'd want to share with the other stakeholders in your business or with your clients, things like that. I'll just open this up and you can see it's basically, you know, a PDF viewer. You can export it to PDF, um, but I don't necessarily want to read something like this on the web because I have, you know, a computer and I'd like to have it look like a computer screen rather than reading a document. Um, so for that, we can go to the monitor section here and then I can open up the website and it basically just says that it's secure and it has a certificate. So I am a winner there, but my behavior is not safe. I need to complete my activities to improve the section to achieve safe behavior. So what that means is they want me to go over here where it says improve. And before I click this, I need to go back to the home screen and just say that improve is the same thing as this option right here. When I first created my account, it says there was 190 actions to complete. I completed one of those and now I'm down to 189 actions. This feels like homework, not like software. So that is a little bit like not a great feeling, right? Um, essentially, what this tool is going to do for you is give you a list of best practices and habits you should follow in order to actually uh, have a more secure online presence. That's the gist of what I'm getting. I don't know that it's doing any active security on your behalf. So let's check it out. Let's go to improve. And it's going to give me this huge list of, you can see these are expandable, right? So here's one list. Uh, this is under the category of safeguard your business systems. So carry out corrective actions on the misconfigurations found. Now, I didn't get any notifications about misconfigurations. So if I click read more here, it kicks me over to a uh, Notion page with a little description of what this task is actually supposed to be. Uh, and it says, if you're unable to find and apply the corrective actions, uh, then you should contact your IT consultant or contact their support. So what happens if I click uh, over here, request support, is it just kicks me back over to that scheduling page where I can book a call with someone for security support. But otherwise, I just got a list of things that I need to click a bunch on. So carry out corrective actions. Okay, done. I've done that. Now I will have gained 20 experience points. Excellent. Now update all installed software to the latest version periodically. All right, I've done that. They're not actually logging into my website to see if I've updated my plugins, if I'm using WordPress or something like that. I'm just kind of saying that, yeah, I'm doing this. Create an inventory of the company's IT systems, devices, software, services, and applications. Okay, I have done that. And you can see kind of that this is going to be just a monotonous series of clicks. Now, that's not to say that it's all bad, right? you could be getting a nice list of things that would actually be beneficial to your website. But, it, you know, we live in 2024 where we have, you know, robots we can talk to about dating advice and whether or not we should cook this longer in the oven. And like, you can do anything with AI. It seems a little bit weird to have a tool that can just like, you know, tell you to do something and then doesn't check to see if you did it at all. So update your company's network passwords. All right, sure, I'll do that. Uh, and basically, as you click this off, if you're OCD, you're going to get a higher score. If I go over to my monitor section here, my behavior is still not safe. So I've got to keep clicking this stuff to make it safe. Hopefully, you actually take action if there's something here in the interim in that is that's helpful. But uh, as far as I can tell, I got those SSL certificates. They knew that. They could have checked that off for me. But again, they did not do that. I thought I already did this one. SSL certificates for your website. I swear I clicked it. Uh, limit physical access to your backups. I encrypt your data. All right, I don't know how you limit physical access to your backups. Like, I mean, they're stored somewhere, but um, you know, they're not like out on the street. You get the point here. There's a lot to do. Um, I could just click through this last one here. 122 tasks. It's to become ISO IEC 27001 compliant. And you can see, uh, there's a lot of stuff to do here that, you know, I don't really even know what this means. Um, so it's, it's not real actionable stuff. In my opinion, appoint an ISO 27001 team and establish roles and responsibilities. There's not a box here to like tell you how to do that or what the first steps would be essentially request support and they'll probably handle it for you. All right. So I was just complaining that there's no buttons here or anything to click to learn how to complete this step, right? It's just basically a checkbox. I can pretend like I did it. 
and then it vanishes. I never have to worry about it again. But there is this section over here on the sidebar that says training. So maybe you would click over there to get training for how to do all the stuff they're asking you to do. But no, alas, here is just another button to click to schedule a support call. It just pops you over to their Office 365. Bummer. There is this section up top here for awareness training, which feels a little woo woo. But actually, uh, this says for premium users only, and I click the play button and it does not play back at all. So, hmm, I'm not a premium user or the videos don't work. I'm not sure. All right, so before we go, I do wanna show you the reports here because that's probably the most useful information. However, if you look at the report, you might have some second guesses about how useful it actually is. So I'm gonna click here into the website report. I'll choose see now. And then again, I could export this. I find it very hard to read here on the web. Of course, I can use my key commands to zoom in and stuff like that, but now I'm essentially just making the screen bigger, right? Um, and as you go through and you read it, you can see that they have got, you know, oh, this is gonna be an official report. We've got low to high to critical. And oh man, I've got a 64 uh, out of 100 uh, risk of being hacked. And here's the industry benchmark. My risk level is higher than the industry average. Oh boy, what am I doing wrong? Um, do I have a DM, DKIM certificate? Yes. Uh, do I have SPF? Not found, but I do have it. So they just didn't find it. Uh, we can scroll through here and see that um, the website has 109 vulnerabilities, apparently. I'm not sure what that means. Um, we've got all of these kind of code names here. I've never seen anything like that before. Um, these are presence of subdomains, which none of these subdomains are real. So I'm not sure what they're getting at here, but um, you know, all these, uh, what this must be like an ASCII symbol. I don't know because I've had some of these things before, like, um, you know, these as subdomains, but I'm not sure what that, that character that is in front of all the subdomains represents. But the riskiest thing I'm doing is using wp-login.php because of course I run WordPress on clientamp.com. What a terrible risk. Uh, this is actually completely overblown and it's not a big deal to have your WP login page available. Yes, it makes it slightly easier for people to identify that you're using WordPress, but if they need to find that out, they're gonna do it anyways. I don't see a real security boost in hiding that. Here you can see all of the ports that are open. We have port 25 open, which is considered a high risk, but we're actually using port 25. So that is why it is open. All right, and then on the last page, it just basically tells you what some of the vocab words mean. Your cyber risk in detail breaks down their categorization, tells you what ICANN is, tells you what M-I-T-R-E corporations are, subdomains, I-A-N-A, -A, uh, basically just a little glossary of the terms they're using throughout the report. So. Not a ton of very helpful info here. If you're at all versed in using the web and managing websites, you're probably not gonna get a lot out of the reports. All right, so quite frankly, not a lot going on here. This would be great if it were just a lead magnet to get you interested in their cyber angels insurance or other security offerings, but as something that you could potentially pay for and then white label to your customers, it doesn't do enough. It doesn't actually connect to your website. It's not providing any tangible, active security service. It's more just for informational and to kind of get you interested in following best practices for security. So security is important. Make sure you use secure passwords. Make sure you're updating your software. Always use licensed software. Don't get cracked stuff. It's just gonna screw you in the end. But other than that, I don't think you're gonna get a whole heck of a lot out of Cyber Angels 1. Pretty disappointing. I'm gonna give this one 2.3. I'm going to pass on this, uh, returning it right after the recording of this video. But hey, if you want to help me out, if this video was helpful to you, you can still click the link in the description and buy something else on AppSumo. I'll get credit for that and greatly appreciate your click. All right. My name is Dave Swift. If you have any questions for me, leave me a comment down below and I'll see you in the next one.